Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Our special guest host, Chris Kalen, is here. What's up? And we got some special guests in the building. Our guy, yeah. Nick Cannon, is here. Yes. With a special guest, Klondike Blonde. Blonde. We, we got a future superstar in the building. Yes. I ain't seen yes, Nick. We ain't see you all year. I know. How you but we've seen him, but he hasn't been here. But yeah, he's been doing been. every damn yeah. thing out there. Yeah, yeah. How you, how you been, brother? I mean, I'm good, man. I'm excited about, you know, obviously here to talk about the new show that we launching on v, uh, BET, VH1. Uh, but just working, man. You know how yeah. it goes. Just the grinds, doing my morning show thing, too. So that's mm -hmm. probably why I really ain't been able to be up here. Yeah, what? future superstar. Speaking of future superstars, how you feel about your son being a better rapper than you? Bro? Ah, how you feel about that? Yesterday, yesterday, amazing. Yesterday, yesterday we played his verse. <laughs> we played his eight bars. Yeah, he, he was, was going in. in. He was going in. The, who, who the fuck you think? Talk? Well, I see, no, I ain't going to, I don't want none of my wax sauce to get on him. So I'm letting him. <laughs> He's like, doing all right. I'm falling back. Now, somebody said he offered the ghost right for you. Yeah, he should. Nah, my son is amazing, man. And like seeing, like, the, you know, when them young kids really got the natural swag, like, I be, he be putting me up on the new game and stuff. And he, the dope thing is he's a rapper, but he's also a producer, too. So he's really, really into that space of, like, making beats and DJing and mm -hmm. gaming and all that stuff. If he wants to do that, I see he, he really got it. He... Y'all see him rocking them stages. Absolutely. He's doing it every night yeah. on tour with his mom. So that's yeah. pressure, though, right? Because he's Nick Cannon is his dad, Mariah Carey. See, there's his mom. no pressure of being Nick Cannon's. You're still a superstar. You're no, a superstar. no, I'm, I'm like, but now being Mariah's daughter and singing. Yes, right. true. True. Right. true. That's true, the true, pressure. True, true. So that's why even with Monroe, we got her doing things like, like I taught her how to play guitar. We still work. I want her to have other aspects. She really wants to be an actress too. Mm -hmm. She's talking about she wants to go to uh, the the Yale. Uh, drama school and, and make sure like if she really gets like she's taking it serious like mm -hmm. she's already mm -hmm. talking about you know getting her her degree in in theater at Yale so like just trying to you know as a father trying to really guide them in a direction and we never pushed it on them but the fact that now they're really starting to embrace it as they get into the teenage mm -hmm. world um really want to cultivate it so I'm, I'm proud of them man dope. Just dope. Yeah. with everything that you're doing right we talked about some of the shows when do you have time to do so many goddamn skits, Nick? Uh, <laughs> I, I was watching one this morning, Charlamagne was like, Nick just bored. He's yeah. just bored. It's all part of the movement, though. It's like, I mean, y'all know, y'all do this every morning. It's like, it's cameras all, always around, every, a lot of creative people around. So I just, my team was like, yo, let's start doing it. We just, we do the, we, I probably do like, I drop like a skit or two every week, just mm -hmm. to, you know, some, some fly shit. Now you do a skit with one of your child's moms? Yes. A lot. Yeah. Now, any other child mom be like, why you do so many skits with well, her? Well, it's interesting because, like, I mean, everybody kind of got their lane. So, like, uh, on my morning show, uh, The Daily Cannon, Daily Cannon, I have, you know, one of the mothers of my children. She's in radio. She's mm -hmm. DJ Abby De La Rosa. So, that's kind of her space. So, our social commentary and daily conversation, that's her lane. So, Bree is on Selling Sunset and, like, kind of like a social media guru and stuff. So, that's her lane. So, mm -hmm. and everybody, even behind the scenes, like, uh, you know, some of them have like foundations and we do a lot of philanthropic work. You'll see that. Some are literally like doctors mm -hmm. and writing op-eds and thesis. So you'll be able, like the people that I, you know, specifically the mothers of my children that I have in my life, I try to cultivate whatever it is that they're into and mm -hmm. even kind of goes all the way back to the business of like future superstars. Like I feel like I'm in that season. I'm in my era of just helping others and, and kind of amplifying whatever it is that they got going. And sometimes you it just happened to be my baby, baby mama. Yeah, yeah, that's always been your thing, though. Nah, Absolutely. nah, I mean, you, know, you too. Man, you, you don't get enough credit for all that you do, you know, helping people and putting them on and allowing them to shine. So I feel like we, we're kind of those guys that get to say, all right, if we see something in somebody, we can kind of put the mechanisms around them to allow them to do their thing. Right. Pray all praise to God. There mm -hmm. it is. Now, Klondike Blonde, how are you, man? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm blessed, black, and highly favored. Now, now, where did the concept of future superstars come from, Nick? And and why Klondike Blonde? Why did why her specifically? I mean, if you she's the goat. She's okay. the goat. Okay. Uh, she she her vibe is punk rock rap. Like, and if you okay. saw her episode that actually just aired, you know, uh, this week is really these people have compelling stories. If we remember what VH1 was always about, was like we saw the behind the music, mm -hmm. and it was really like telling the story. Sometimes. You know, it was a, a retrospective story, but now it's like these are the origin stories. So this is like before the music. This is in her journey, man. I mean, everything that she's gone through in life uh, from, you know, there's a lot of tragedy. There's a lot of things that where her music helps with her anxiety and to be able to kind of create your own genre. We went on this tour and I just wanted to highlight and tell the stories of these people that are just more than musicians mm -hmm. because 
we didn't we don't have that no more we don't have other than platforms like y'all had but we came up with vh1 behind the music and mm -hmm. you know uh 106 in park and all right. that so i feel like we can now still be those curators to help this next generation because i just got frustrated as somebody who has a label and has artists and like Yo, what happened to that promo run? What happened to mm -hmm. putting people on on the road, coming into radio stations, playing their song, meeting PDs, and shaking hands, kissing babies, all of that type of stuff? And we did that. I started the the tour with Live Nation, and then I put the cameras on it, and you know now we got you know a tour, a TV show. They on the cover of Vibe magazine. Mm -hmm. It's like so now it's like this is like that that starter kit of like all right, the way Double XL mm -hmm. has the freshman cover, but now we got the cover of the magazine, we got the tour, we got the TV show. So if you see one of these acts, they literally gonna become, you know, the next superstar. What you just said is why I feel like it's hard to build superstars nowadays. Facts. Like there are no, I don't think there are, who's the last superstar? I'm talking about superstar we've had. Facts. Now, and then we had that conversation all the time because it's like, one, you don't, everything is so microwavable. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Everybody mm -hmm. wanted, wanted now, and then when they don't want it no more, they on to the next thing. Right. But if you know someone's story, if you know what she went through, mm -hmm. if you know, you know, her relationship, you know, with her family and the, and the things that, you know, how close she is with, you know, her brother was a, a, a one of her biggest fans and had a tragic accident, and now she's doing it for her brother. If you know mm -hmm. that the songs that, you know, why she has all the tattoos is connected to growing up in a trap house and her mom and dad being teenagers. Like, when you know that about somebody, mm -hmm. when you hear their music, you're like, okay, I'm connected now. And right. I feel like this generation of kids, they, they're figuring it out through their phones and mm -hmm. social media, but it's never amplified. You never get to see it at a level uh, to where, you know, hopefully we doing with super uh, future superstars. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. So, like, what you being from Raleigh, North Carolina, the South, how did you get discovered? Because it seems like no one really looks for us down South. Exactly. Especially so, in the Carolinas. Right. Right. So the thing is, I did move to Cali when I was 12. Okay. So, um, but this was in the Bay Area. Even in the Bay Area, I couldn't really, like, get my name out there like I wanted to. Mm -hmm. So as soon as I turned 18, I moved to Atlanta. Because I knew, like, growing up, I knew that was the spot, like, to be, like, to get discovered and to pop off your career. So that's really how I got discovered in Atlanta. Okay. What about the name, Klondike Blonde? Honestly, it came out of my ass one day. I was really high. <laughs> what? Yeah. It came out your ass one day? Okay. <laughs> what is that? Some more ice cream? Too <laughs> <laughs> many, many Klondike bars? Yeah, right? Like, what happened? Out of nowhere. Like, I had just cut my hair and bleached it blonde, oh, and cool. I was about to upload my first song. I'm looking in the mirror high as hell, and I'm like, I'm not finna upload this song under my government name. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. It just came to me. I was like, Klondike Blonde. This is it. So I really, I uploaded the song. I put the name is Klondike Blonde, and it just stuck. Let me tell you how stupid one of our producers is. Very so, st like, so stupid. <laughs> this, is, this has nothing to do with you at all. She goes, yeah, she's a lesbian. And I go, what does sexuality got to do with anything? I get that a lot. Because it's Tom Dyke. Tom Dyke. Then she comes back in the room and goes, oh, Kyle was wrong. She's not a lesbian. <laughs> <laughs> But Shit, did they want mad. her to be one? I have no idea. <laughs> I'm like, what does this have to but do with anything? But when she said it, I was like, oh, wow, that makes sense. Right. Right. I'm like, oh, that's, 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 that's kind of dope. I'm like, that's dope. But, but it's, you know what's crazy? Like, when I be out and stuff, like, at the club, for some reason, like, I get so much female attention. Like, they grabbing my phone. Putting, they don't even know my name yet. Oh, okay. They grabbing my phone, putting their number in my phone. I'm like, fuck. Probably because of the tattoos. Maybe. I don't know, but you're a cute the girl. Short you're right. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I think you're a vibe. So, what do you. Oh, go ahead, No, go ahead. Nick said the tattoos tell a story. Yeah. You have yeah. a weapon of mass destruction on your neck. That's <laughs> <laughs> the AK-47. Yeah. Okay. AK-47. Everything AK crazy, but everything got a reason. Talk to me. Right. Where do we start? The AK. Yes. So Abella and Katana are two of my little sisters. So the A plus the K together. You feel me? Okay. I don't know. Now, what, what about, about the, the wolf? Under the 919. It's not a wolf. It's my doggy. <gasps> oh, okay. Well, he's from the wolf family. <laughs> <laughs> he is from the wolf family. <laughs> you're right. You're right. And, and, Rambo, the, and the triangle? Okay, so one of my best friends, I was like, I don't know, I was a little sad one day, and she said that this is supposed to, like, uplift you and, like, change your you life or something. just listen to it. <laughs> yeah. Triangle. Like, so you, know it? <laughs> you know what's crazy? She told me, like, in the morning, and I went to go get it in the afternoon. So, mm -hmm. like, that was kind of impulsive. She's one of them impulsive. Like, her, her song impulsive. right now is called Tatted Up. That's her it single. Mm -hmm. And she literally, I mean, one the biggest one is probably covered right now, but she got Blanca. Like, yeah, Blanca on my belly. Oh, like, like Thug some, Life? All, yeah, yeah. also like, Tupac shit. So, it's like, she she really about that you, where did you Why find Blanco, people that don't know? I think yeah, Blanca's Blanc. some gangster Brizelda shit, right? Blanco. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. Blanco, yeah. She's, one of my she's also a cult She's a real gangster. Yeah, I see. Where did you find it, though, Nick? I mean, well, honestly, it's, you know, she's kind of truncating her story a little bit but she was on the grind for a minute and actually had a song that went super viral a lot of people already uh uh the her drip record went crazy like 
20, 30 million streams. And I heard, like, my kids were singing it off of TikTok. Mm -hmm. And all, I'm like, I just, one of them annoying ass songs. <laughs> like, I'm back on my grip. Annoying. I mean, damn, like, damn, I, mean, like, oh, I didn't I know about it. Like, I seen my kids singing it. Like, okay. what is this damn yeah. song? And they're like, And you got to make sure it's not something inappropriate. Yeah. 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 And it's like, oh, this joint is crazy. And then through our connection, you know, uh, through Frisco Chuck in the Bay and everything, she, they, uh, who runs incredible music, was like, yo, this is. This is that record, and then we were we met her, and knowing that she was already moving, mm -hmm. as I was like, "Yo, this, she's a superstar." Like when she walked in the room, I'm like that's a star right there. Mm -hmm. And then from there, I was putting together the Future Superstar tour, and we we're like, "Yo, we could probably make this work." And you know me, I'm always thinking TV shows, movies, mm -hmm. products, and all that. And she embodied everything that we was trying to put together with that that young energy. The fact that she already had something that was popping, and really just wanted to cultivate, like, "Yo." When you see somebody, I was like, all right, we're going to tweak it like this. We're going to take all that viral sensation and yeah. put something on it. And I was like, yo, she's a rock star. So we've been going with this punk rock rap movement that she created. And do, do you feel like you are, because I see you standing behind her, and you know, yeah. do you feel like you missed out because you didn't stand behind by Kalani like you should or maybe her? Because you, you had something to do with her too, right? Yeah, yeah. And a lot of people don't even know there's a connection between her and Kalani. It's just something, I mean, it's something in the water in the Bay Area that mm -hmm. really like, it's just young stars up there really, mm -hmm. really getting it popping. And, um, I think one of the reasons why I actually brought uh, Future Superstars to VH1 is because a lot of people don't know me as the music executive or, you know, the actually... People try not to think about you in music. See, that... Damn, because the motherfuckers <laughs> like this. <laughs> it, because this is the motherfucker who started no. between him, Carlos Miller, <laughs> fucking all, everybody that I employ on Wild It Out. They, we try, we, you know what's crazy? About you we created this narrative that I don't know music. You uh, know what's crazy? I was singing the words to Gigolo and he was so upset that I knew the words to Gigolo. I, 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 I knew the words to Gigolo. I knew the chorus to Gigolo. I thought this was my fucking friend. Oh yeah, T.I. just shot it. I kind of straight. Straight shot yesterday. Yeah, I like, see that. Oh, the cannon don't got no hits. That's not true. <laughs> but Gigolo hit? is a hit. That's not a hit. Don't make me start well, singing it again. I don't fucking had this conversation. Yeah, I'm a Gigolo really lost like, like, Again, in all yeah, seriousness, you 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 do have a good eye as a music executive. Yeah, yeah. So and I've been doing it so for quite. So what happened, Kalani? What happened? I mean, she, I mean, it's still as an executive and even this process because what I don't like to be and we can get a little deep in this. I don't like to be one of those those executives that take advantage of people. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be some, I, I'm, I never like the vulture energy of just like, oh, I'm a scientist, I'm gonna take credit. So what I do, I've helped a lot of artists and I just fall back and you could tell the world that I helped you or put you on or signed you if you want to, but I'm not, I don't force you to wear the incredible chain. I don't, and because that's how the industry has been set up for so long. And so now you, you hear be. all of these stories of people saying, this person took my publishing, this yeah, person, yeah, yeah, yeah. I never got paid. I never wanted to be, one, because I was an artist. So I was like, when I get the opportunity to put people on, I'm not gonna force my hand on anyone. So the beauty of future superstars is I get to show the journey. I get to show all the hard work that mm -hmm. I put in the artist without having to be like, this my artist and this is this. And, and, and now when I make those deals, and get like I'm just I don't want your money I don't want you to you be you sound like Suge Knight when Suge Knight did the, the Source Awards if you don't want an executive that's all, all in the videos, videos. <laughs> <laughs> taking all your publishing <laughs> come over here come incredible. there incredible <laughs> nah but in the sense it's like I just really want to be fair to people mm -hmm. and so yeah, right. that's the reason why you never heard about me you know helping a lot of these artists that are superstars now but people are like man you got to take your credit you got to show people what you do and now because we keep cameras around and stuff all the time i can show people the process of this is how a music executive really moves and so my journey my narrative on future superstars you get to see me go from city to city mm -hmm. really looking for superstars literally every city we went to um i gave out ten thousand dollars to an artist emerging artist that's usually a signing bonus for yeah. life and i would just get here's a ten thousand dollar grant you had to sign the grant and talk tell me why you popping in your city and we was literally handing out big checks in every city to and getting them ready for season two so, so you own mad publishing that don't nobody know see, about. Nah, see i don't <laughs> i just gave them money charlotte they, man. I don't, they kept their publishing <laughs> but i just said man hey i want to see you continue on so mm -hmm. it's one of those scenarios where i i want to pay it forward and show people that you don't have to steal pe from people and I think because of someone who has a talent and who has a gift, you don't have to leech off of someone else's mm -hmm. gift. You could just amplify their gift, and hopefully that's what future. Well, what about is. her? Because I mean, I saw the Kalani because I, you know, I know you had Dolly doing like a lot of the yeah, day yeah, day yeah. And so, but what, 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 I, I didn't see her. I never saw her. Well, interesting enough, if you go back, and I, and one of the things because she was, we kind of had them the same time. They kind of even grew up together, mm. uh, and I was real close uh, with 
with Gabby, as we know as her, like her father and stuff, we kind of grew up in the same, you know, hood. And, and, and so I would always, her dad actually was the one that told me that Kehlani was not doing so. It was homeless at the time when she was a teenager. I was like, yo, you should call that girl that you had on America's Got Talent mm -hmm. because we were already working with, uh, with Gabby who was nine or 10 years old in like a phenom of playing like seven instruments and stuff. And we didn't Gabby know. Gabby is her, y'all. Yeah, yeah, we didn't know oh, what to do man. with her at the mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's so funny when you're saying her because you don't know who I'm talking about. Right? <laughs> Especially <laughs> her, the artist, right, her. Right, right, right. <laughs> Gabby. Uh, and then um, she she would see, we were working on Kehlani and she was trying to find her identity as a kid. And she was like, yo, I want to, and I'm like, yo, you should, let's, Forget about, you know, the artistry, just work on the music and focus on that. And we don't even have to put an image out there. And then that's eventually how she came up with cultivating, like not showing her face and kind of just making about the music because wow. her sound was so mature. Yeah. Like her voice is so amazing that a lot of people are like, that's a little girl. Like, mm -hmm. and we actually, if you saw, if you go back and do the research, like we had Gabby, uh, she was on, you know, those like emerging artists on the BET Awards yeah. as Gabby Wilson. And it would, you see this little girl, this giant bass. <laughs> guitar and you know she was on the today show and like mm -hmm. it was like more gimmicky i put her in a nick if you look like there's a nickelodeon movie that i wrote and directed called school girls that we put it was justin bieber's first movie it was so soldier boy she was one of the little girls and so you see the work that i put in with these artists mm -hmm. over the years and then you look up and you're like oh damn that was such, like people who pay attention know that we was doing it mm -hmm. and then by the time they become the stars that they are you know some some show love some don't but it's just like yo it's not my. It's not my place to be like. I'm the one that gave you your are they, first. Are they still signed to you, or, or, they, or they were never signed? They were. I don't want people to be signed to oh, wow. me. That's what I'm saying. Like, I don't yeah. need that. That's like, true. again, like, why? I if I can connect you, I don't want to be your middleman. I don't mm. need none of your money. I don't need none of your publishing. And I, every artist that I work with, I'm like, I'm gonna be good whether you're successful or not. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so if anything, let me be able to be a mentor and tell you this is what I think you should do as someone who just cares about you and wants to see you win. When you sign somebody, that gets a little weird. Business transaction. Yeah, right. then yeah. it's a, I don't want to have yeah. ownership over nothing Got you. that God has blessed you with. I'd rather partner. I'd rather either just do it because I want to do it, or I'd rather just partner with you. Exactly. Right. Oh, and then in that partnership, I'm bringing something to the table right. other than connections and all that. Nah, That's like, right. let's, let's work on something together. And then in these things, as partnerships, we can get money together. But I don't ever, like, even that thing, like, I wouldn't want, I don't want no, if I, if I ain't write part of the song on my part, I don't want nothing that Kaylani or, or her or mm -hmm. Trey23 or any of these people that ha are great amazing songwriters i don't i wasn't a part oh, of that so why should i be why should that's i be collecting true. on that yeah is that so, pressure klondike for you pressure as far as because what? you know you hear about the her story the kalana story is it pre pressure for you to reach that level nah, of success? i mean it is i wouldn't say it's pressure from that i just have that desire to reach that level of success regardless mm -hmm. um no i don't think it's pressure at all Mark. do you feel like you had your i made it moment yet I feel like I accomplished everything I said I was going to do as a kid, but mm -hmm. being here and seeing that like I accomplished those things, I still see that I have way further to go. So I don't think in my head that like I'm where exactly where I need to be. But you're definitely on the right track, though. But I'm on the right yeah, track. Yeah, you're definitely. We the almost track. there. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> why? Why did you uh, just focus on music though with future superstars, Nick? I think we're gonna. I mean, you. That's just the first show that I rolled out. Okay. You're gonna see a lot more stuff. I mean, obviously in the space of. You know, comedy is where, you know, we, we get off really well. And, you know, platforms like Wild and Out has birthed so many stars. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I'm, I have that place where I can implement social media stars and, and even comedians and actors because mm -hmm. Wild and Out is going to continue to go and do, do what it needs to do. So I feel like I have that lane. And again, part of the music thing for me was people didn't know that I, there's a lot of people like, Nick Cannon does music. And then, then so the fact that I was like, <sighs> see this motherfucker over here. <laughs> When I, even just the word music, like before I was rapper, right now music. Now it's like the press. this it nigga, it, it, music is something at every project. All of my successful projects, Charlemagne, have music in them, and I'm you a music. You did do a good gospel song with Kim Burrell. No, it was not. It, it, it was Kim Burrell. Kiki Sheer. Kiki Sheer. I'm sorry. <laughs> you don't even know her. Because I, I was lying. <laughs> I, I lied. I, tried, I just was like, you know what? I'm not gonna do them like that. And I, I'm, I'm not even talking about being a fucking artist. <laughs> That's what I get for lying. Look, that, <laughs> motherfucker. Here. So, like, mass singer, mm -hmm. America's Got Talent. Yeah, yeah, right? absolutely. All music-based stuff. Mm -hmm. Wilding out. 
every like and I, I say this all the time I make all the music on Wild and Out mm-hmm. but it's just like people just they see the aspect of, of like every, drum line like, every, right. like everything that I do has a, a musical vibration to it mm-hmm. it's just that you know, for whatever reason, because the motherfuckers like this, the narrative <laughs> is that I haven't been successful. It has nothing to do with me, nigga. It, it, you're, the, you're the culprit. <laughs> it's, no, it's, it's, it's you, oh, nigga. I, by the way, I only say rap. I don't feel. I don't no, say no, no they just said music. You see how the fucking media will make this? Like, I'll take the rap shit. Who lays the clip back? Like, but now it's like the, now I'm not now I'm not successful in music. Like, not, well, but, people don't know those things though. But that's why that's the yeah, whole yeah, purpose yeah. of Future Superstar and itself. Like, we joking, we friends and shit like that. But it really is educating people to the space of like yo I've been a music executive for over 20 years but do you think you, you overworking uh, we, we know you had uh, health issues before yeah but you it, it don't seem like you slowed down it seemed like that made you work harder it like, gave me more I mean shit the clock started ticking faster like it gave me like yo I, I really had to get serious in that sense of like yo alright let's it's bandwidth more than anything mm-hmm. it's like alright I got a lot to do you know God ain't done with me he, he's, he's blessed me with the opportunity to have gone through some real shit and now it's like, all right, now let's get your health together. Let's lock in and really focus and make the most of your time. So every day that I wake up healthy and shit don't hurt, it's like, I got to get to it. Like that's the blessing in itself. So Did you really think like, I mean, we all dying, right? So yeah. you never know when our last day will be, but you really think like the end was near? Hell yeah. Especially like during that time, it got dark, like during like, you know, 2012 to even like 2016 because I didn't know and I couldn't get the shit right. So every time I got one thing right, like I get a, a blood clot here or pulmonary embolism I couldn't like my lungs like so once I got to this space of like all right I've figured out you know how to stay healthy and Mm -hmm. how to stay alive then it's like that's the constant reminder of like you got to do something with this you got to turn your pain into purpose and Mm -hmm. and for me that became helping others like and Mm -hmm. you know you you go through this this spiritual transition of like all all the things that feed me are probably not the best for me but when I'm feeding others that's when I feel the healthiest. That's mm-hmm. when I feel the the drive to do. So now I live in that space. I'm like, all right, what can I do to to make the world a better place? What can I do to to lend a hand to the next artist? And you know, that's you know, that's that that's that healthy journey for me to where it gives me that drive because I don't feel like I'm busy. I don't feel like I'm doing too much. I feel like, yo, this is this is my calling. This is mm-hmm. where I'm supposed to go with it. So you know, hopefully, however many more years I got left, I keep rocking. Was that the reason you started having so many kids? People say that I don't know. Like I, if if I if I took the spiritual, I think aspect, you might have said it in an interview or joked around. And I, I was joking. I think you probably said it, I think it here. here. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I was. But it, I, if I'm being serious, it wasn't like I set out to do it. It probably got to that space of like. I value being a father. I value life. So I was I was never against the concept. And if we want to have deeper conversations about, you know, like what I talk about in, in therapy and even as as men, it's like there are those times and we've been, you know, I've called it access to excess. I have the ability That's right. mm-hmm. to right. to do my thing and mm-hmm. pro and and a lot of others probably I, I could I could have stopped, you know, and and or even not had the children, but I I was welcoming the idea of it and was never against it. So, you know, I, I've worked through a lot of that through therapy of like, yeah, I love being a father. I love the life that they they give me life. Mm-hmm. But and I could have made some other decisions, you know, with the the mothers of my children. But I was one of those people like I I want to have these kids and as many kids as I possibly can because you know I come from that mentality of like is as long as I could take care of my tribe and and we can live in an abundant way, that's how I want to be there. And then, you know, you we go through those, you know, everybody has challenges, mm-hmm. you know, and, and nobody, it's, I, I don't want everybody to feel like, oh, I got it all the way figured out and I'm mm-hmm. just out here having babies and everybody's good. Like, but every family goes through their process and, you know, whether you want to be from a judgmental standpoint or whatever, it's like, you, you cannot deny the love that goes mm-hmm. on in and, and, and how much I care for my family. And, you know, hopefully, you know, the, at the end of the day, the only people that would be able to, to tell you if I was a good dad or not are my children. How do you mm-hmm. feel about that with people being so judgmental, you know, saying that you have so many kids and how yeah. could you possibly raise these kids and be at their games and be at their recitals and, I, the and proof be is in the pudding. I mean, look, watch me do the work. Like there's, it, I don't, and I, that's why I said at the end of the day, the only people that really matter, the only thing is going to be my kids. Mm-hmm. And I, through therapy, it's like, I realized at some point 
you know, I'm not going to get it right every time, mm -hmm. but as everybody knows that I'm doing my best yeah. and, and being the best father that I can possibly be, uh, considering the circumstances, then, and I live that, I, I stick my chest out. It, it's going to be sometimes I, I fall flat and like, damn, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't do that one correctly. Or this is more challenging if, if I, if I wasn't spread so thin, mm -hmm. but it's all rooted in a space of like, I'm trying to give you my all and I'm trying to be my best. So regardless, you know, I would say what people say or people's opinions about me is none of my business. And, and if anything, I take that, that low frequency energy and shift it to where it's like, all right, keep talking because I'm doing the work. How you, how are oh, you Wait handling a Christmas? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> is, it, is it low frequency energy if people say, Nick, why don't you wear condoms? <laughs> Is that low frequency or that? Who told you I don't wear condoms, Charlotte Bay? Well, the condoms you, you use, you need the suit. <laughs> <laughs> like, you need the suit. You, you use the condoms, about? you need the <laughs> suit. First of all, Jesus I could have had a lot more. Do you want more? But because of condoms, <laughs> there is. There is. Nick, you don't wear no damn condoms. Ain't nobody here crazy. I don't, believe, I don't believe you Do wear you damn want more condoms. Kids? I, you are I, the worst condom spokesman ever. You're allergic. Allergic. As a matter of fact, don't I say you're allergic to latex or something. You're allergic to latex or something. You know what it is. No way you wear condoms. Look, what? Oh, Chris, what you are you pointing at me? What? I'm asking a question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm asking a question. We're asking questions. I'm asking people. I'm asking people. Is this an interview or is this an interview? Is this an interview? This is an interview. This is an interview. This is an interview. But how do you handle Christmas? I mean, I joke, I'm saying, oh, I'm St. Nick and everything, but it, it's really structured in a way to where those, you know, I kind of take that week and turn it into Christmas week. Okay. You know, and, and, and there is, because I'm traveling and flying, like I'm trying to be every, everybody, and even Thanksgiving was the same way. I was in five, six different Thanksgivings at a time because it's not, it's my mom's Damn. house, it's my grandmother's you house. What do you say, 20 minutes, 30 minutes? Why do I, I mean, how long is dinner, nigga? Like, like, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't gotta be here that long. Y'all play spades. I'm out to the next house. <laughs> Do you eat? I mean, I, I take everybody. You know, everybody cook different. So yeah. like, <laughs> you take one thing from every house, and by the time you get to the last house, you got the whole. My white baby mama. I'm not really eating that potato <laughs> salad. <laughs> but, oh my god. <laughs> But you know, no I might participate in that cram. They got casseroles over at the no White House. Casserole. <laughs> <laughs> it's different crazy, between man. pumpkin pie and sweet potato pie. <laughs> now, one, one of your baby moms, Bree, she said, how you juggle your 12 kids for the holidays is your problem. And I, I don't see it as a problem. I think she was saying, like, that's it is, but it's I don't involve her. Like, but she, I feel like the baby moms got to make it easy for you, too, right? They do. Yeah. And that's what, I, like I said, I, I give them credit to where, like, even in the, the process of, like, they say this is what we want, and it's everything from Christmas pictures to sled riding to pictures with Santa or experiences. Like, I make sure that every kid who wants to do something or we have certain things set up, we make time to go do it. Mm -hmm. So it's almost in that thing, like, look, we want to do these six things for Christmas. All right? and they they want to do these things. So I'm kind of, again, it's I'm all over the damn place, but it's fun. I mean, y'all see my IG. You see me like... I'm at I'm at the Grinch Miss one day. I'm mm. over here at you know Candy Cane Lane the other day, and it's really like my kids are having an amazing time. And it's mm -hmm. and it's not to be performative. It's just like yo, this is my life, and mm -hmm. we fucking having a ball. Like nigga, I, you know how much money I spend at Disneyland a year? Uh, we can I imagine, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> I got six, so I I, I can imagine know. what. No, the percentage the, the crazy thing is because I used to host Christmas morning at Disneyland, right. mm. and so I used to get that Disney bag. Like it was like, and it was. They they were perks, so all of that stuff was free. It's no longer free, huh? It's no longer free, and <laughs> I had two kids then. So like to be twelve, so, and every birthday, Chris, like I'm literally at Disneyland at least once a month, and to move around Disney, like I probably I'm probably spending two hundred thousand dollars a year at Disneyland. Sheesh. Do at Disneyland. Membership? Yeah, because you got to pay for the chaperone. You got all Nick of that. But first of all, Disneyland is expensive at, yeah, uh, right. at on top. Like, if you're right. trying to stay in the hotel, and mm -hmm. now it's, it's not how it used to be. Like, you got to make reservations yep. and Jeez. stuff like So, to sp I'm spending $200,000 a year at Disneyland. Dang. They need to give you, like, a membership or something. I used to be an employee. That's <laughs> what I'm saying. Like, I used to, I'm like... Mickey, can you hook a nigga up? Like, can, I, can I get my job back? That's what job I need back. I was thinking too, man, and this is the last thing I'm going to say about this. I think it is your duty because you are a man that is of service. Yes. You should tell people what kind of condoms they Just use. Oh you know, so God. nobody else uses you. Use those condoms. <laughs> you should really tell people what this your is, brand of choice. Okay, again, first of all, I, I like the gold wrapper. That's where it is. And those work very well. 
I none of my children came from a condom mishap. They were purposeful. <laughs> they were playing. Oh, so you went raw on purpose? Yes. Oh, okay, Don't you yeah, go yeah. raw on purpose? But I'm married. Yes, as you should. Yes. But I'm saying during those times, <laughs> yes. you you go raw on purpose. <laughs> I I have never <laughs> had unprotected sex with someone that I didn't intend to be with. Right. Like I know if I'm having unprotected sex that this person could get pregnant. Mm -hmm. Chris, Nick like a jail bay. You tell, <laughs> yeah. all, you tell all those women they say they love you, I'm gonna be with, be with you. you. It sounds <laughs> real gay. <laughs> We had a conversation about jail baby. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mark Pop talking to Jaden when he was. I mean, you to... really feel that way. <laughs> I'm a I'm a fearless romantic. It's tatted on my shoulder. But does any woman that, that that you had a child with did they feel like they were gonna stop you from doing it and you were gonna be the one? Did y'all ever have I don't that know, conversation? You ask them. I mean, uh, it's funny. Like, did you ever say dreams so of making them think they were gonna be the last one? I'm just taking it all in. She's taking it all in. Do as I say, not as I do. Because one of them had to feel like they could change you. Like, right. I'm gonna change but, it. I'm because the, the women in, in my life are so amazing. They they are elevated in the sense that they never tried to change me. They knew what it was, and it wasn't like. It was just a process because all of them started off as true companions, mm -hmm. and I look at them now. It's like those are the people I talk to. Like in that sense of not only like some poly, you know, I but like those are the only. That's my circle. That's who I. That's who I go to when I'm having issues because the world a lot of times is against us. So like we gotta stick together in the sense of like they. I gotta protect them and they gotta protect me, even not to generalize them as a group, but just mm -hmm. individually, those are the people that I go to when I'm depressed, when I'm fucked up, when I'm mm -hmm. like, damn, I don't know how I'm how am I gonna do it this month or what and they take, they see that I only got so much in me. You know what I mean? So when they see I'm a little depleted and I need to unplug for a second, those are the people that I rely on. So what if your baby mamas decide to start dating? Like, is that an issue? Some of them are in relationships and stuff like okay. that. I don't know. That, it's, I don't run this. Like, it's not like this is my kingdom. Mm -hmm. Like, it's whoever you want to be, whatever makes you happy, I support it. And I, I guess maybe I'm a, I've kind of evolved to a place where... Mm -hmm. I'm not driven by that. Now, obviously, the interaction is going to be completely different because somebody I'm rom romantically involved with or intimate with, I'm going to have a certain level of connection with them than I do with somebody I don't and I just co-parent with. So even at, you know, at the highest level, you know, the world has witnessed, you know, Mariah being in relationships mm -hmm. and it, it's always been love. That's somebody that I've always admired and considered one of my best friends for life. And there was never beef whether she's in a relationship or not. So... I I don't have a problem with it. I, and I goes back to how I always talk when I was like, like I only I like who like me like if, if you fucking with me I'm fucking with you if, if you host with something else then that's what the energy is so I've never tried to push myself into a scenario that I'm not welcome into. Did you Miss Carrie ever said anything to you about having all those kids? Yeah, what she I mean, say? I mean, I, she's I've seen her do interviews about it. She it it doesn't reach her it it doesn't penetrate her bubble. Gotcha. You know what I mean? Yeah. She got she got so much going on. That's the queen Definitely. of Christmas right now. She don't give literally. A, like she 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 treat me like J Lo. Like who? who <laughs> I don't know him. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. Like what are your thoughts on all of this, Clon? Like when you hear this. Um. Yeah. What are your thoughts? It's your life, Miss Blonde. <laughs> she's like I'm here for the music. I mean, I think if I was a dude, I might be living the same life. So I fuck with it. I feel like my nigga, for real. Like, and then you talking about like they like your backbone, you depressed and stuff. Like that's a lot of support. That's fire. Like, <laughs> no, like, you got a lot of support. Right. People love me. me. I feel you. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. 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 <laughs> now let's talk. Does Nick want to get married? Do you look at? Do you see nah, marriage I'm in the never future? Married, uh, never yeah. again. Yeah, absolutely not. I mean, because last time I got, I, I used my words incorrectly. Last time we was having conversation, I'll be forgetting the mics is on and shit. Mm -hmm. And I said it was a Eurocentric concept. Mm -hmm. what, what I really meant is the colonial aspect of marriage. It's, it's a business. Mm -hmm. And I've been in that business before. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be in that business no more. It's so much paperwork. I don't want the government to be involved with my love life. I shouldn't have to have a a legal document or a contract to let someone know how much I care for them that I want to be their protector and their provider. It's kind of like the child support system. Mm -hmm. If you take care of your children, there's no need for paperwork mm -hmm. because it, this I want I want my kids to have everything that I own. I want I don't want them to go without at all. I want mm -hmm. them to live an abundant life. So I don't need the government to tell me the minimum that I need to pay cuz I'm going to give them the maximum. Mm -hmm. So same thing with love and marriage. If I fuck with you for life, 
I don't need to be binded by a, a contract or a ring. And therefore, that's in the way those contracts are des- designed. That's from a Roman Catholicism approach of how we do it. There's ways to have unions and covenants and mm-hmm. marriages through so many other philosophies in life, specifically, you know, in our African community from the diaspora. They do it differently. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I'm learning and understanding those processes, but I know if you go over to to the continent, it ain't about contracts. It ain't about paperwork and rings. It's like, nah, this is this is my wife, this is my wife, and however that moves around. So the concept of the American society mm-hmm. marriage, I'll never do that again. But the, who's to say I can't find a life partner gotcha. that I'm I'm a rock with. I'm nigga, we ain't old. Like I'm we in that state where it's like by the time I'm in my 60s, I want to be on an island or top of a mountain in yeah. Tibet somewhere with somebody I could rock with forever. So That's I'm looking at told like, me, like Kevin Lyles actually told me a long time ago. He said, I can't tell you to get married, but I can tell you, you should always have somebody to share your experiences with. Yeah. I fuck with that heavy. Mm-hmm. Like that, I, I can see myself doing that. And then the fact like people are like, oh, aren't you worried about getting lonely? Like I got 12 fucking kids. Like, <laughs> ain't never going to be lonely. Somebody coming over. Like, But even with that, that's scary too though, right? Because I, I read something where it said you spend 70% of all the time you're ever going to spend with your kids between one and 18. That's and crazy. When, when you think about it, that's probably true. Yeah. Think about how many times you've probably seen your parents as you get a, as, an, as become an adult and you're out in the world trying yeah. to figure things out. And then even when you think about like the time that they spend at school and sports That's and stuff right. like there's mm-hmm. other people who are with your children throughout the day more than you are. And I'm learning that too because I'm trying to be present at all of these games and you know, I'm I'm picking them up from school and knowing the teachers and spending time at the recitals and it's like I want them to at least see my presence there because I know there's gonna be a time where I'm on a film set for two months. There's mm-hmm. gonna be a time where I'm on tour over here. Mm-hmm. So I want them to see me every free time that I can because when you think about the person with the average person with a nine to five from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m., they are under the supervision of a completely different adult. Mm-hmm. And then even by the time you get get to work, you tired, they tired. You might get to see your kids, what, from six to eight mm-hmm. and then y'all sleep. And then again, like so like mm-hmm. the average because I'm, I'm with my with my therapist, we've done the 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 math on it, the average time that a parent spends with their kids a day is less than three hours Mm -hmm. and then when you think about like that's why weekends are so important that's why vacations are so important because that's when they really get to know you and that's when you really get to it's all it's about the qualitative approach and it's really about creating as many core memories in that amount of time that you possibly when your therapist talks about average parent he ain't talking about you right no because clearly (laughs) but but that's what to me i'm trying to go above and beyond when it comes to that that parenting aspect because i'm trying to create the best core memories as possible because Mm -hmm. core memories can be in a positive light or in a negative light Mm -hmm. so you know i I don't never and that that's all about keeping your word that's all about managing expectations because if i tell my kids something i'm gonna make sure i do it and and you know obviously i have a, a strong support team to help me accomplish a lot of that Mm -hmm. but again you know as is as important as it is to sit back and analyze these things through therapy uh and i mean you know this very well it's like you're constantly trying to grow you're constantly trying to figure out how can i be a better dad considering the circumstance what put you in therapy was it that dark time or a lot of it i mean i started going to therapy early on with like church you know and you you and that that's not i don't say that's not real therapy but that's like your your entry you know, way to be like, oh, I can sit and talk with a pastor or social groups that mm-hmm. kind of understand what we're going through. And then I started going to facilities of incarceration, prisons, when I was about, uh, I think it was 2007, we started doing a lot of group therapy uh, through that process. And then I saw how these, you know, young brothers and sisters were really growing. And I was like, I'm getting so much out of this, of even watching this experience. Mm-hmm. And then through relationship, like I started doing that uh, probably maybe five years after that started working through it and then you know once my health really started i really needed somebody to talk to because i didn't know if i was going to be living or dying and all that stuff and so i really really started taking it serious like 2016 mm-hmm. and i mean I'm, i know you're a huge advocate for it absolutely we got a new we got a new platform that we're launching at the top of the year that's specifically about men in therapy and being vulnerable and talking about you know these processes but i was it like an app or something or? Uh, it's an app, but it's also it's a new show. I'm gonna come back and talk about that okay, one, okay, okay. that okay. one too. But it's it's a it's something that we're mm-hmm. it's it's something that you and I uh, share uh, pretty pretty deeply. But man, I'm in therapy probably 
I probably go four times a week. Wow. Mm, what? Yeah, I got one therapist that I go I see on Tuesday. What is it? I just, it's Tuesdays and Fridays. Tuesdays and Fridays is my my personal I'm talking and downloading and then there's you know I do family therapy you know where I bring my children in in, in certain aspects and awesome. and then even you know there's the holistic approach I talk to a lot of you know shamans and things like just getting different perspectives and then you know those conversations that you have with pastors and in this new project that I'm talking about it's kind of I mean I'll, I'll kind of give you a little bit of it but it, it's a it's a table it's a setting of men with professionals so I have a lot of doctors and psychologists that are, you know, and clinicians that are actually speaking to issues that men are doing. So oh, I have you gotta let me recommend you a couple of names. Yeah, hundred no, percent. I know I know a couple psychiatrists that you should definitely have on there. Come on, man. Have, That's like, what that, I mean, absolutely yeah. should have on there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there's people that we all both know, like the like the doctor issues of the world and things oh, yeah, like that. Like so he's man. a part yeah, of it. He, yeah, yeah. He, he was uh my the psychiatrist I used for my book, Shook One. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So he's 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 uh one of my co hosts on that show and, and stuff. So well We'll bring all of that to the table, but the importance, I mean, that's why I applaud you and, and you know, you kind of been living your life out loud and, and showing your growth and your process and what, you know, how important mental health is. And and you've, I'm sure you've helped so many men and, and just people in general, just, of, we all going through something. We all Absolutely. got challenges. Yeah. Absolutely. And then when you can actually just be like, I can't handle it today. Right. You know what I mean? Or like or that, those pressures. And we've all actually lost people who are very quiet and then we said, damn, I wish I would have known. Or, damn, mm -hmm. I wish I could have. And that, even, you know, taking it back to Klondike Blonde, if you watch our episode of uh, Future Superstars, he's like, it's, it's cute, it's fun. And you see her sitting there with, you know, uh, her her dog, as she calls her son. And she's like, this is my emotional support. Oh, my dog is my son, too. Yeah, but my she's emotional a, support animal. It's, yeah. But it's legitimately her yeah. emotional support animal because of all that she's gone through in her life. And you see, like, through the love of that animal, through her music, she's been able to stay alive wow. yeah. and it's like that process because i have had artists that i've worked with that have taken their lives and i had no idea it got to that that level i have had artists that were on that point and right be because someone intervened or because mm -hmm. they actually said oh you should check on that person we were yeah. yeah i mean i wasn't trying to get too deep into yeah. who, who the person was or, but even the person that you look up to that you admire the people's music you love they going through it mm -hmm. And we got to create this community that we can be there for one another. And it's not soft to, to do it. Or, or it's not like, oh, man, I was busy and I didn't get a chance. to. But, and then we now have this deep hurt and That's this right. deep regret mm -hmm. because we could have made the phone call. Right. Or we could have been a little gentler when, in the process of like, damn, you really going through it. Yeah, and it costs nothing to be kind to people. There it is. I saw them ask Eddie Murphy, too, to give you some <laughs> advice. Did you see that? I love it. Yeah. <laughs> you, I was waiting for the advice. <laughs> he gave you, absolutely nothing. 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 He's like, he's, I ain't got no advice to help me. He got 12 kids. Yeah. All he I said was love him. Yeah, I passed Eddie quick, too, because yeah. he was... I, I look up to the Eddie Murphys, mm -hmm. to the Bob Marleys, to the Muhammad Ali's, mm -hmm. to all, to the Dr. Sabies, to all these people who have giant families and mm -hmm. providing for them all and mm -hmm. all of their... When you talk to anybody in Muhammad Ali's camp, anybody in the Marley family, anybody, they love their father so much mm -hmm. and they like man my father was amazing like that i i hope and pray people look at me the way uh or my children look at me the way that eddie's children look at him i hope and pray that you know the way that people admire muhammad ali as the mm -hmm. father that he was like that's hopefully you know 10 15 years from now my children are saying those type of wow. things about me do you, do you consult with other men who have multiple kids yeah, not at that level. I'm not. I, like I said, I haven't talked to Eddie. You know what I mean. I mean, other than like him, keep going. You know, what I mean? like that, that in, in, in passing. But like I haven't, I haven't had the opportunity yet. But I, I, and you know, I've had conversations with men who have multiple children, uh, who's saying like, man, I understand what you you going through, and you know, there there's people that have come. Dick Gregory was somebody. I mean. Uh, who I believe I, I think he had like I think he had nine kids and stuff, but I was able to with all of his children are amazing, all you know older than me and people that I, you know I look up to, but just his process and being a father to multiple people, and then there's scenarios like you know mine is like the reason why it was so shocking to me like at thirty I didn't have no kids. You know, but now sitting here, I got 12. Yeah, so, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, that so, fast. yeah. Right. So, so they happened, you know, quickly, and at the same time, it wasn't all with the same woman. So, you know, it's it's a little unique in my setting, but I'm trying to figure it out. Wow. Two more questions. What jokes do you get tired of more? Jokes about your music or jokes about Mariah? I don't, honestly, they only come from, those are old jokes. Those are new. <laughs> 
the new ones is like probably more now it's all about the, the kid the jokes kid, like yeah. you know Bill Maher and all of them I'm on every late night show mm -hmm. of like it's the multiple kid jokes so I ain't tired of those yet but I gotta keep giving my Wild and Outcast some more material gotcha. like, like, <laughs> so well, that, we, got a, we got a producer that works here uh, Charlamagne says he's the president of the Fat Live Matter <laughs> movement Yes, <laughs> he says out of all of the overweight media male cast members you've had on the show who is your favorite? On it's only one. It, it gotta be Fat Mac. <laughs> fat Mac. Fat Mac. That's his Rick, Rick Roth name. Fat, 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 fat Mac. I told him that's a better name than Big Mac. <laughs> but I don't want him to be fat forever. We don't. Yeah, we gotta. You know we, gotta I mean? we gotta. We gotta. We gotta. Today. But and that we we work, right, we gotta make sure. I will pay for his surgery if he can get I, down well, to a weight. That's the thing. But when you lose your fat, you lose your funny. You think? You think so? No, because someone looked at the big Who skinny, got skinny? Who, there's a it? bunch of fat, and I'm not telling you to be to be unhealthy because you could be fat. Bruce Bruce and be been healthy. hilarious forever. He been fat forever. No, but he's lost he weight. Lost weight he went in as big as he used to be. I'm, I'm all right. I ain't seen Bruce. Yeah. <laughs> you want Bruce up here too? Salute yeah, yeah, Bruce. Yeah, yeah. Bruce, Bruce, Bruce. We did a movie. Uh, we did that that holiday movie uh, for VH1, and he was in it. So he. He's still Big Bruce Bruce. Okay. It's almost like the debate with Skinny Luther and Big Luther. Like yeah. Some people like Big Luther. You like, like Big Skinny Luther. You like Big Luther. Damn, I'm to I want Big Ma I want to Big Mac too. to be as healthy as he possibly can. Well, and we, we I get him in the gym and all that stuff, but we don't want him to be skinny, Mac. But he came in with a Sprite Zero yesterday. <laughs> so, no, is that not progress? No, Mac be, but no, that Mac was at 9 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 We gonna make sure Mac stays healthy. We got a new, we, he got a show that and stuff that we working on too, that mm -hmm. specifically in that space. But. And we want him to be here to do the show. Yes. Absolutely. Yes, because mm -hmm. yes, you don't see no uh, old big people. No. No. Mm -hmm. Eventually it all catches up. Absolutely. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Well, we appreciate you for joining us, Nick Cannon and Klondike Blonde. What can we no, expect from Klondike Blonde next, though? Like, what, what, is, it, what is it a project dropping? Like, what is it? Um, we are working on a lot of records right now within the punk rock rap little genre. Um, she in that vibe, that that little Uzi, that juice world. Like, she's uh, yeah. like that yeah. whole festival vibe. So mm -hmm. she, you know, you're going to see her do a lot, a lot mm -hmm. of shows. And like, on her, road. Yeah, she got the tatted up record out right now that's streaming going crazy okay. you know the, the the tattoo world is a real world that she's embraced and living in and like all her punk rock rap music is going is going to go up so she's one of those artists that stream like yeah. again that was one of the issues why I created like you heard the song you heard the song on TikTok you know that but, but you never no see the person the artist, right. Right. Yeah. now we going to turn her into the superstar that she needs to be in, and you know allow her fans to kind of touch her in a way that you know it, it be, hopefully we take it to that level who's all on incredible I know Justina Valentine Hitman Holler Blonde, Hitman Holler okay. yeah, yeah. Those, those are I mean there's a, a plethora of acts that we're working with and again I don't like to be like oh you're signed to incredible mm -hmm. but these are the people from the artists that you see on you know even people like DC Young Fly is an amazing artist mm -hmm. it's just that we gotta line it up for when it's time to focus on his music cause mm -hmm. he's doing so many other things so the artists that we're focusing on at the moment is Klondike Hitman and Justina are the ones that you're gonna see in the like within the next sixty days dropping, and you know we got a lot. Season two mm -hmm. of Future Superstars is gonna be a whole nother run. Right. Season two, you got to come to Charleston. We and do find some yes. talent. Seriously, hundred percent. I mean, you I got a playlist. You can hear some awesome things. You know, we we all we all Carolina yeah. right here. That's right. That's That's right. Carolina squad <laughs> over here. That's right. I'm, I'll be there uh, tomorrow. My grandmother just turned 104, or she oh, turned 104. that's a blessing. Yeah, wow. shouts out to Kareen Cannon. Happy birthday. So, wow. I'm spending that's with my great grandmother. Absolutely. In right. Kannapolis, North Carolina. <laughs> Kannapolis, what's that next to? Uh, Concord, Charlotte. Oh, Charlotte. Okay, Charlotte. Okay, got you, got you, got you. Got you, got you. Yeah. All right, well, it's The Breakfast Club. It's Nick Cannon, Klondike Blonde. Thank y'all. Let's go. Thank y'all. Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club.